the Duchess of Sussex loses her first round in the newspaper lawsuit. Uh, they just keep losing. Remember, Harry lost the first round of his lawsuit. It was dismissed not that long ago, and now they're losing again. If you're winning, you just keep winning. If you're losing, you just keep losing. And that's what seems to be happening with Meghan and Harry. There are three categories that the judge removed, that they, uh, the allegations that the, day, the mail on Sunday, one, acted dishonestly, two, stoked the family rift between Meghan Markle and her father, Thomas Markle, and three, conducted an agenda against Meghan Markle by publishing offensive and false stories. The judge decided that it was irrelevant to the essence of the case, uh, and the, case, the essential case being that the publisher was guilty of illegal acts. Those acts are number one, misuse of private information, number two, copyright infringement, and number three, breach of the Data Protection Act. And you can see that the, the things that the judge dismissed are more emotional accusations, acting dishonestly, stoking the family risk, rift, conducting an agenda, having a, a, an agenda against Meghan Markle. Okay, and the things that are kept are much more technical, legal aspects. Let's see if we can read a little bit. The Duchess of Sussex lost an early round in a, in a London court Friday when a judge dismissed part of her lawsuit against the publisher of a British newspaper, The Mail on Sunday, that puts out expert excerpts of a letter to her estranged father. Essentially, they published the letter to her father. Why did she write a letter in hand, in her, in her cursive hand? Why didn't she just text him like any psychopath would, uh, you know, rage texting? Why didn't she email him? Why didn't she call him on the phone and hash it out over the phone? Why not call him on a video chat? Uh, there's a whole lot of ways to contact him, and it seems like a paper letter is the worst kind unless you're going to save it you know like monica Lewinsky saved that stained dress from uh william jefferson clinton to accuse him later uh, and then how did the five anonymous friends get a copy of that letter unless she gave it to him and and do you make copies of letters that you send to people i support a child and have for years you know in the third world uh, and I don't make copies of my letters and hand them out uh, to people. This is what I wrote to my kid, you know, the kid that I'm supporting. Megan sued Associated Newspapers for Invasion of Privacy and Copyright Infringement last year over a series of articles in the Mail on Sunday that reproduced parts of the letter she wrote uh, to her Father, in a, in a Friday, in a ruling on Friday, Judge Mark Warby threw out some of the causes of actions argued in her lawsuit, including the claim that the newspaper publish, publisher acted dishonestly by quoting certain passages of her letter. And the allegation is that she that the publisher only par, published parts of the letter and didn't publish other parts of the letter, therefore misrepresenting or taking out of context those passages of the letter. Thomas Markle admits that he did not give the publisher the entire letter because some of some parts of that letter were so incendiary and personally painful to him that he just really felt attacked and he didn't want to put those out in the public sphere. And the five anonymous friends were attacking him publicly before he went to the mail on Sunday with the letter. Okay, so he's defending himself and he has a right to defend himself and the allegations are already in the public sphere. Warby also struck the claim that Associated Newspapers deliberately stirred up a dispute between Meghan and her father, Thomas Markle, and had an agenda to publish intrusive or offensive stories about her. Yeah, Thomas Markle was defending himself and the common carrier, which is the newspaper, published his defense.
Good day, YouTubers. Welcome back to my channel. Time for a spot of royalty. Meghan Markle loses her first round in the lawsuit. Okay, and essentially it's it's because of uh, a letter she wrote to her father, basically telling her side and poor after the five anonymous friends went on People magazine, and those five anonymous friends will be exposed uh, in the court, but after the five anonymous friends went on People magazine uh, to to roast Thomas, and there was just an all full-on attack against Thomas for quite some time after the poor man had a heart attack and everything else. Anyway, uh, the allegation is that you know, they misrepresented the letter. They, they're they on a, they're hunting Megan. You know, they're out to ruin her reputation. It's funny how these things turn around. <clears throat> so let's look at how, how is the legal team reacting to losing the first round? Okay, because this was preliminary trial. They were checking out uh, the the points that were going to be addressed and they're just they're agreeing that we're going to address this We're not going to address this. So they knocked out three points and that's acting dishonestly Stoking the family rift and ha conducting an agenda against Meghan Markle now I noticed that Harry is not mentioned in any of this Meghan loses the first round. It doesn't say Meghan and Harry lose the first round So what's the legal team's reaction? Are they like? You know, well, maybe we should just settle. Or they're like, nah, show me the money. They're like, Megan's paying, show me the money. You know, I don't know. Hmm, this is interesting. Oh, dear. Nah, that's interesting. The outcome's interesting. Well, let's read this. Uh, in the outcome, we have a full stop. We have a judge and the law. We have... Ace of Hearts, which is for the best. 13, 14, 23, 6 clubs. Uh, it's in everybody's best interest to just give up, maybe, for the family. It's in the best interest for the future and the family and the rooting to just cut and stop. They may be thinking of, you know, let's just, you know, we don't have enough case here to continue. That may be what the legal the legal team may advise. We don't have enough. Well, let's see what the rest of the cards say. Water into wine. Well, this really changes things, okay? Water into wine transforms everything. This ruling transforms their case. It really changes everything. Big change. All the people behind is the sweet face. Megan is presenting her story. You're bullying me. Okay, you're mistreating me. You're misrepresenting me. I'm the good person here. And and ironically, that was the whole point of Megan's letter. The fact that she penned a letter to her father was to to tell the world <clears throat> to put her father on blast and say, "I'm the good guy." Okay, the fact that I didn't invite you to my wedding, my own father, I'm the good guy, you're the bad guy. And that was the whole point of the letter. So that's the roses. That's the sweet face. But ironically, it turned out completely, it's turning out completely the opposite. People are really upset about at Megan for how she's treating her father. Uh, and they no longer think that he's the bad guy. They think that she's the bad guy, and how could you do that to your father? And the man had a heart attack. You put him under so much stress, the man had a heart attack. On top, we have Mother Earth. This could be family, you know, family. There's a baby inside the, inside the womb there. Hmm. All right. So what do we have? This really changes everything in the eyes of all the people she's trying to justify herself as to why she did not invite her own father to her wedding who raised her and treated her like a princess her whole life and <clears throat> the family on the mind is the family and they are definitely thinking of stopping 
This can also be just the whole situation. This is the legal team. So this really is a big blow to the legal team, and they're considering, well, maybe we don't have enough to go forward. That is literally maybe what they're thinking. Let's look at Meghan and Harry, their reactions. Because their reactions may be very different. Harry may be like, I don't want to do this anyway. You know, I'm kind of glad we lost because everything that is happening here just just takes another bite out of Harry. And if you take enough bites out of Harry, there's nothing left. Okay, there's just the wrapper. Uh, and so they may be thinking very differently about it. Megan may be thinking, uh, you know, that uh, if she's a narcissist, okay, it's all about wearing the mask. She's wearing the mask. And the mask cannot slip. Uh, you know, she's perfect. Uh, she's always right. That's the mask. Okay. And underneath that mask is a, maybe a very uh, insecure person, a very angry person, a very violent person, whatever. But that's not the mask. So uh, in the case of a narcissist, uh, you know, it's life or death to keep that mask on. Uh, you know, that they're right, that they're the good person, that they're never wrong, that they have to justify themselves. Well, I don't think that's the truth with Harry. Harry is the, probably playing the empath. You know, I'm just doing, he's doing this for the best of Megan. So let's look at Megan and Harry, their reactions. Megan's reaction. Hmm. Harry's reaction. <laughs> All right, my battery went out. So I'm wondering if Megan's reaction is different. Well, we have commitment right in the middle. This is the lawsuit, mustard seed, committed to the lawsuit in the world, 11, three, and these actions. She's still very committed. Harry, on the other hand, he's on the fence of, okay, 23, 28, seven spades. He's keeping it to himself. He's devastated. He's like, it's over, baby. Forget about it. It's over. You know, take your toys and go home. Okay, Magi is manifesting. He's reacting and manifesting, reacting. What they were trying to accomplish or manifest is it's over. Okay, this is the worst possible result. So this is two losses in a row. Harry uh, had some kind of a lawsuit. I think it's the same thing. And he lost that. It was dismissed. And now these three aspects, there's like six aspects to the case that they're prosecuting, and three of them were just dismissed. They're not going to hear any oral argument. They're not going to receive any testimony on these three aspects. And these are the really emotional aspects of the course, basically of the, of the lawsuit. So basically, Megan is saying, they're bullying me. Okay, I'm being mistreated. I'm being misrepresented. You're bullying me. And that's all the stuff that was removed. And what they kept was the very technical legal aspects. Misuse of private information. That's very technical. Copyright infringement. That's, that does, I'm not feeling a lot of emotions when I say the words copyright infringement. Breach of the Data Protection Act. I'm not having an emotional reaction to that. So all of the things that, that the judge kicked out, dismissed today, acted dishonestly. You're lying about me. Wow, that's a very emotional statement. Stoked the family rift. You're creating a break between myself and my father. That's very emotional. We have an emotional tie as a family, Megan and the father. They're conducting an agenda against Meghan Markle by publishing offensive and false stories. Well, what's offensive? That's very subjective. That's emotionally based. What are false stories? False stories are lies. You're telling lies about me and you're hurting my feelings. All of the emotional stuff was kicked out, was removed and dismissed. So Harry's ready to quit. He's like, what we're trying to accomplish here, it's over. Ten is completion. Ten spades is the worst uh, outcome. Cornucopia and sun. 
So sun exposes everything. Cornucopia is everything material. So every, underneath, everything is going to be exposed. Oh, that's interesting. So the, the risk here is that everything is going to be exposed. The big risk for Megan is that those five anonymous friends, something is funny about it. Okay, and those five anonymous friends who spoke to People Magazine and cited the letter and put it in the public arena, which makes it, uh, which gives Thomas every right to defend himself in the public arena, which is what he did. There's something funny about those five anonymous friends. Okay, and if, if, if like Megan is pretending to be one of, one of her own five anonymous friends... That's just not going to play very well. So there's huge risks here. And now perhaps the risks outweigh the benefits. But Megan is still committed. And I think it's because, I think it's irrational. I think that she's so committed because she just has to be right. Hmm. Maybe we should ask that. What, why is Megan so committed? Is she commi is she so committed because does she feel that this is like life and death for her to win this this uh, I don't know. I mean, what's underlying her tremendous commitment? Because she's she's absolutely committed, and everybody else else, including Harry, is like, no, we're done. You know, this is not working out. You got full stop over here with the law, legal team. And Harry's like, yeah, it's over. Uh, and Megan is like, nope, I'm still committed. I'm going to drive my car right off this, right off a cliff. So why is she so, let's see if we can get some insight. Why? Two spades, broken chalice, four spades, strength. Oh dear, that's interesting. Why is Megan so committed? Well, we have four spades out of six cards. Three, six, yep. So her foundation, uh, dead and secrets, there's a dead body in that box, and broken. Broken foundation, six and 11, 17, five hearts, reacting to circumstances. Yeah, so she's just like broken. She's broke, kind of broken inside. She's hiding a lot of a lot of ugly, you know. She's hiding a lot of hurt inside her belly, you know, inside the box. She's hiding a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of trouble, uh, and her her the broken chalice is split. You can see the land is split. The boat is split. Uh, she's kind of split. There's kind of two Megans. You know, Heather has two mommies, but Megan may have like two different kind of persons inside her. One is a very hurt and injured person, and the other person is perfect and successful and beautiful and and rich and, uh, you know, a future queen and the Duchess of Sussex. Okay, so that's kind of what we're seeing here. She's, there's a split between the mask that she's wearing and what's inside very much. And she's hiding a lot of pain in that box underneath. And that's why she's reacting so strenuously underneath. We have seven spades, 10 hearts and scapegoat. It's all completely emotionally based. Okay. The cup is overflowing. Uh, scapegoat is an illness card, feeling rejected, feeling cast out, secretly feeling rejected very emotional, uh, 18, 25, seven hearts and the sevens return forever. Seven is secrets and seven hearts is, uh, feelings and healing and direction. So she's very injured and it's very emotionally based. She is acting entirely on emotions. Her emotions are overriding any logic that she may have. And she seems to <clears throat> not be able to tell uh, over and over. She seems to not be able to tell the difference between her emotions and her logic. 
I wouldn't say that of Kate at all. Uh, I wouldn't, I, you know, Harry is kind of a very hard on his sleeve kind of person. I wouldn't say that about Harry. Harry is still rational. William is very rational. The Queen is amazingly rational. Just an incredible chess player. Meghan, on the other hand, is always appealing to your emotions, always coming at people very emotionally and acting very emotionally because she's, she feels very damaged and hurt inside, but that's not the image that she projects. Okay, so on one other topic, we have that video chat with SmartWorks. Okay, so the SmartWorks girl, she's applying for a job. Uh, at first, people were thinking that that's the same girl that Megan hugged. You know, they after doing events, and this is in the UK at some point, Megan and Harry did an event while they were still the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and then they walk through, they walk in a line, and the crowd is on either side, and then and then they'll greet people because that's a very good idea, good thing to do. Well, Megan hugged some girl, and she looked almost exactly like this SmartWorks girl. It's been determined that those are not the same two girls; they are different girls because they figured out the names of them. Uh, but this chat that Megan had with the SmartWorks girl was filmed like three weeks ago, but it's released on the day or the day after, right at the time of William and Kate's ninth anniversary. Okay, why didn't they release it three weeks ago? Why did you hold it until... Obviously, she's try until Kate and William's ninth anniversary, unless you're stealing the oxygen from Kate and William's ninth anniversary celebration. That's kind of mean and calculated. So, is Meghan Markle still burning with the competition, the jealousy and the competition against Kate? Is that why? Megan's still burning with the competition against Kate. There's a jealousy card. The snake is jealous. The snake is vengeful. Because ironically, okay, Megan, what Harry was the most popular royal. Megan joined Harry, and so initially her popularity rose to almost match Harry's popularity, okay? And that's natural, because now they're together, so Meghan is going to be as popular as Harry. Well, very quickly, everybody saw that Meghan was not cooperating. Meghan was not uh, doing her role. She was very outspoken in all the wrong ways. Uh, and then it became, and so her... Her popularity was quite different than Harry's for a short time, and then Harry's popularity plummeted. So either Meghan's popularity is going to rise and match and equal Harry's popularity because they're going to be almost they're going to be almost the same person, okay? Or Harry, or what happened is Harry's population popularity plummeted to Meghan's very low popularity because people realize that Meghan is wearing the pants not Harry, and Meghan is driving the action, not Harry. That, and that's, it couldn't be more obvious now that they're in L.A. I mean, even the most casual, uninterested observer is talking about how Meghan is wearing the pants and Harry's been destroyed. Uh, I was just watching one of these guys who talks about relationships between men and women. He was talking about Meghan and Harry and how uh, Harry has been just destroyed as a person. And that was just like yesterday. And he doesn't talk about the royal family. He talks about relationships between men and women. Okay, so, so ironically, Meghan right now, if she had just done her job and, and followed Harry and, and done her job as the Duchess of Sussex, it's very likely that right now she would be more popular <coughs> than Kate. Okay, the future... Uh, 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 what do they call them? Just, uh, you know, K William will be king, Kate will be queen consort, the future queen consort. Okay, so it's so ironic. All right. So, is it because, is it just all the jealousy? On the surface, official, man, direct action, and decision. Ten, 
and 23 six clubs. This is how she acts. This is this is just direct action. Everything is just like this is this is the best business decision. This is on the surface, this is just the best business decision. Piggyback on others, it undermines Kate and William and it lifts her up simultaneously so she gets double uh, on, on the other hand, she's not uh, taking into account the damage that she's causing to the relationships. What's underneath? Well, we do have the snake who is very jealous and vengeful. Permanent family, deeply rooted situation. Woman in the, in the public sphere. We have the butterfly, which is very public, very beautiful. Okay, presenting a beautiful, the woman presenting a beautiful appearance in the public sphere. Uh, very this is habitual. This is every time. This is how she does things. And way on the bottom, it is based in jealousy. Okay, her actions are based in jealousy and competition. So uh, that's interesting too, because the, the lawsuit is alleging that she's being bullied. But Megan is is constantly undermining others, okay? And I think we can make a case that she is undermining Harry to the point of completely destroying him. This is her husband, okay? If he, if he succeeds, she succeeds, okay? But in, in the twisted world, in this twisted world, that Megan is creating, if he succeeds, she fails. If, he, if she succeeds, he has to fail. If Megan succeeds, everyone else has to fail. And that's just how she does, that's just how she rolls. And that's, that creates a lot of problems in your life. And you shouldn't be surprised if people attack you if that's how you live. And I have met other people like that. My narcissist, the narcissist that I dated, if she succeeded, everyone else had to fail for her to succeed, you know, and, and especially me, uh, which is, it's, that's completely not functional. You can't have a relationship with somebody like that. You just have to get rid of them. You have to, you know, ghost them and get away and move. All right. So we have, let's review. What is the legal team's reaction? Well, this changes everything. This changes everything. Uh, and it changes the basic foundation. It really, it strips away half of their lawsuit. So it really changes their basic foundation. And Megan is all about just making sure she comes out on top and smelling like a rose. But in the outcome, they're like, you know, they're def it's in our best interest to stop and just cut this, to just cut our losses and settle and, and decide that, we don't, we don't want to go forward. Uh, there's maybe not enough here to go forward and have a successful lawsuit because they just cut half of it away. Okay, so those three arguments, will all the emotional arguments will not be heard at all. So the legal team is now advising, let's cut our losses. How is, how is Megan feeling versus Harry? Harry is like, this is the end. Uh, what we were trying to accomplish, we did not accomplish. We have to react to this new situation that's been created. Megan, on the other hand, is absolutely committed. All systems go. She wants to justify herself. Underneath all of this is the huge risk, son, that all of the nefarious dealings will be revealed. Okay, and that's a bigger risk than than what they're addressing. There's much larger risks underneath with the five anonymous friends and the funny business. If any of that is exposed, I mean, Harvey Weinstein, here we come, you know, uh, then they're going, then the tabloids are going to then expose other stuff. What about all the craziness with the surrogacy and the, and the pregnancy and the ball, you know, wow, that's a lot of, that's can really, that can really hurt your reputation, Megan. You know, be very careful. Why is Megan so determined? Uh, you know, why? What's going on? Well, she's really damaged inside. There's a dead body inside. There's secrets and a dead body and all kinds of, you know, rotting things inside the coffin. And she's kind of split from her foundation. 
Okay, there's, there's the person that the public sees and there's the person behind the mask. And this is a lot of people in Hollywood, okay? This is a lot of people in Hollywood. You know, Harvey Weinstein, I mentioned him. Steven Spielberg, I know him a bit. And he's a, I think he's a very different person than you believe he is, you know, in the public. Uh, and I think there's a whole lot of people like that. And maybe Michael Jackson, although I think he's innocent of the pedophilia charges, uh, because I did a reading on that. Uh, and, you know, just a whole lot of people like that. And that's a lot of them get into drug addiction. And because the, the, the public appearance is so different than the person inside, the person inside has all kinds of bad things and insecurities and, and that's what we're seeing here with Megan. And her behavior is very emotionally based. This is, scapegoat is the sickness card. Sickness because of secrets and very emotionally based. And this seven hearts, it's two sevens. It's just, it just recycles endlessly and endlessly and endlessly. And so I see her as someone who is trying to justify herself that she is this good and beautiful and successful person in reality you know, and not just in the public sphere, okay? And she wants that to be her true reality. And that's a fake it until you make it kind of thing because, you know, I have a friend who won a Grammy and that's how he is. He's, uh, he's depressed, he's sick, uh, but he won a Grammy. Um, all right, so the smart works. Is Megan, uh, is, is this just... Is she still burning with envy against Kate? Whereas, ironically, she could be in a higher position right now in the public sphere, and I think that would be very satisfying if she had just played her cards right. Is, is she still burning with the en envy? This is how she does it. This is, on the surface, this is how she does business. It's like she doesn't think about it. She just piggybacks and upstages and undermines people. That's just how she does her business. Underneath... There is jealousy, very deeply rooted, you know, wants to be first, wants to be beautiful, wants you to pay attention to her and be perfect, but it is based in jealousy. That behavior is very secretly on the very bottom of the spread based in jealousy. So in, in one sense, Megan is kind of a really damaged person and yeah, so... I'll be careful what I say, because if I say something like, we should just give Megan a hug, I'm going to get a lot of flack about that. So anyway, that's how I see it. I'm Joseph Magi, author of Playing Card Divination and Fortune Telling the Magi Method. Find the book worldwide on Amazon and Kindle and paperback versions. Find the full color card deck used here on Etsy slash Magi Method. Many thanks to the generous folks who have bought me a cup of tea. Please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment.